Hi boys and girls. Today I'm reading to you from my porch because it is just so nice out. But before we read chapter 11 in Because of Win Dixie, um, we'll kind of recap chapter 10. So Opal went up to Gloria Dump's house and they ended up having a peanut butter sandwich together and she found out Win Dixie loved peanut butter and jelly and she told Gloria Dump about um, moving to Naomi and she told her about her dad and um, and Opal invited her to come back because they planted a tree together for her to take care of. So Opal is definitely working on making friends in Naomi. So let's see what has to happen in chapter 11. That night there was a real bad thunderstorm but what woke me up wasn't the thunder and lightning. It was when Dixie whining and butting his head against the bedroom door. When Dixie, I said, what are you doing? He didn't pay any attention to me. He just kept beating his head against the door and whining and whimpering. And when I got out of bed and went over to put my hand on his head, he was shaking and trembling so hard, it scared me. I knelt down and wrapped my arms around him, but he didn't turn and look at me or smile or sneeze, wag his tail or do any kind of normal thing that when Dixie would do. You want the door open, I said? Huh? Is that what you want? I stood up and opened the door, and when Dixie flew through it, like something big and ugly and mean was chasing him. When Dixie, I hissed, come back here. <clears throat> I didn't want him to go. I didn't want him going and walking to the preacher pre and waking the preacher up. But it was too late. When Dixie was already at the other end of the trailer in the preacher's room, I could tell because there was a sprawling sound that must have come from when Dixie jumping up, up on the bed. And then there was a sound from the preacher like he was real surprised. But none of it lasted long because when Dixie came back, came tearing back out of the preacher's room, panting and running like crazy. I tried to grab him, but he was going too fast. Opal, said the preacher. He was standing at the door in the bedroom and in his trail in his hair was all kind of wild on top of his head. And he was looking around like he wasn't sure where he was. Opal, what's going on? I don't know, I told him. But just then, there was a huge crack of thunder, one so loud that it shook the whole trailer. And when Dixie came shooting back out of, out of my room and went running right past me and I screamed, Daddy, watch out! But the preacher was still confused. He just stood there and when Dixie came barreling right toward him like he was a bowling ball, and the preacher was the only pin left standing and wham, they both fell to the ground. Uh-oh, I said. Opal, said the preacher. <clears throat> he was lying on his stomach and when Dixie was sitting on top of him, panting and whining. Yes, sir, I said. Opal, the preacher said again. Yes, sir, I said louder. Do you know what a path, what pathological fear is? No, sir, I told him. The preacher raised a hand. He rubbed his nose. Well, he said, after a minute, it's a fear that goes way beyond normal fears. It's a fear you can't be you can't be talked out of or reasoned out of. Just then, there was another crack of thunder, and when Dixie rose straight up in the air like somebody had poked him with something hot. When he hit the floor, he started running. He ran back to the, my bedroom, and I didn't even try to catch him. I just got out of his way. The preacher lay there on the ground, rubbing his nose. Finally, he sat up. He said, Opal, I believe when Dixie has a pathological fear of thunderstorms. And just when he finished his sentence, here came Win Dixie again, running to save his life. I got the preacher picked up off the floor and out of the way just in time. There didn't seem to be a thing we could do for Win Dixie to make him feel better. So we just sat there and watched him run back and forth, all terrorized and panting. And every time there was another crack of thunder, Win Dixie acted all over again like it was surely the end of the world. The storm wouldn't won't last long, the preacher told me, and when it's over, the real Win Dixie will come back. After a while, the storm did end, the rain stopped, and there wasn't any more lightning, and finally the last rumble of thunder went away, and when Dixie quit running back and forth, and came over, to where, over where, to where me and the preacher were sitting, and cocked his head like he was saying, what in the world are you two doing out of bed in the middle of the night? And then he crept up on the couch with us in this 
funny way he was, <clears throat> or he has, where he gets on the couch an inch at a time, kind of sliding himself into it, looking off in a different direction, like it's all happening by accident, like he didn't, like he doesn't intend to get on the couch, but all of a sudden, there he is. And so the three of us sat there. I rubbed Win Dixie's head and scratched him behind the ears the way he liked. And the preacher said, there are an awful lot of thunderstorms in Florida in the summertime. Yes, sir, I said. I was afraid that maybe, maybe he would say we couldn't keep a dog who went crazy with pathological fear every time there was a crack of thunder. We'll have to keep an eye on him, the preacher said. He put his arms around Winn-Dixie. We'll have to make sure he doesn't get out during a storm. He might run away. We have to make sure we keep him safe. Yes, sir, I said again. All of a sudden, it was hard for me to talk. I love the preacher so much. I loved him because he loved Winn-Dixie. I loved him because he was going to forgive Winn-Dixie for being afraid. But most of all, I loved him for putting his arms around Winn-Dixie like that like he was really trying to keep him safe until chapter 12 boys and girls